Okay, so that's that's all they wanted for part one, just to find that area. And then they give us a new piece of information. We are told, this is part two now. We are told that, whoops, this should be a V, shouldn't it? Yep. Yeah. We are told that dV on dt equals negative k. Now just pause for a second here, right? What does this statement say? I, this is what we love about mathematics. That it's, it boils everything it's down to incredibly easy. succinct things. Okay, number one, um, because I think actually they, they said they haven't said k is a positive number, but it's kind of it's kind of implied. Look, if I'm putting a minus sign here, if k were negative, I might as well just not put a negative sign at all. But this is the change in volume, right? This is how the water content is changing. Yeah, it should be decreasing because the thing is evaporating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not only is it decreasing, it's decreasing in a particular way. It's decreasing as a, a multiple or in proportion to what the surface area is, right? So you can see um, k is a constant, I think they said this in the question. As a gets smaller, dv on dt gets smaller. Does that make sense? Um, more area means faster evaporation, less area, slower evaporation. Have you explained it? Say it again. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure I interpret like what this means because this is kind of a link into exponential growth and decay. Because you're going to see equations that are in a, not quite this form, but in a very similar form, where there's a derivative that is some multiple, that is some proportionality to some other constant, that's some some other variable rather that's important in the question. So in this case, the variable that really matters is surface area. And as that gets smaller, evaporation will get slower. Okay? So I'm going to take this now and have a look at what they want us to do. Show that the rate at which the depth of the water changes is negative k. Huh. So what I'm looking at is this thing here, this distance, and I want to look at how that's getting, or it should be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? Now if I wanted to, I could introduce a new variable, I suppose, and call this, right? And give it a name, like say d for depth. Right? I could do that, but I already have a variable in my question that's equivalent to this. Right? Is As this is getting smaller, you can see that h, which is right above it, is getting bigger. Right? So all I really need is an expression for how h is changing over time. What do I call that expression? dh or dt. DH or dt. Very good. So I want this. But using all the knowledge we have of rates of change and how to convert from like these other rates that I know to this rate that I don't know, how am I going to get dh or dt? What am I going to use? I'm going to bring chain rule into play. So clearly I'm going to need a dh on the top and a dt on the bottom. And then you look and you say, oh, okay, I have dv on dt. So that must be this guy, right? And if it's there, I'm going to need to cancel. So I'm going to need that here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm writing this. I'm actually not ready to evaluate this yet because I don't know what this is. But at least this statement tells me, oh, well, now I know what I need to work out. That's what um, this was about, right? Because this is V as a function of H, oh. right? V as a function of H. So I can work out dV or dH off of this line, okay? In fact, I'm going to be a bit sneaky and I'm going to work it out off this line. Can you tell me what dV on dH is going to be? Okay, so there's a constant, I'll just leave that out the front. And you remember I took uh, and a third out, right? Well, I can put it back in now because these are both divisible by three. So I'm going to have pi. That looks familiar. It's A. Okay, so, so now, now I'm ready to actually do this. Yeah. So I know what uh, dv on dh is. So therefore, dh on dv is the reciprocal. So I'm going to write that. Oh my okay, and they just told me what dv on dt was. Um, I'm actually going to, I don't want to skip this step, it's minus ka, but in not the what previous, previous part, the previous part I worked out what a was, right? So this is 1 over, <laughs> it is pretty neat, um, minus k times, and here comes my area expression, okay? So this is times pi 16 minus h squared. Now, remember, having a look at this question, it's a show question, okay? So I don't want to skip anything out. Uh, I think it's fair to cancel pi's, okay? But to make this really, really clear, you can see that these two are backwards. Yes, these two are backwards. So I'm going to use that minus sign and bring it inside, okay? So this leaves me with k times h squared minus 16. 
on h squared minus 16. I don't want to skip that line. I know it seems a bit trivial, but having put that minus sign in, now I cancel, cancel. So therefore, I get this. Okay, now pause. We always say you get to the end of like an amount of working and then you think, have I answered the question? No. I haven't answered the question, have I? W why not? Why not? Okay, so the first thing is, yeah, you have a slight moment of panic when you're like, wait, I didn't want K, I want a negative K. But that's all right. In fact, that's kind of what we expected. Because remember, we're not talking, like dh on dt, h is not the depth of the puddle. h is the distance above the puddle. That distance should be getting bigger, which is why the puddle is getting smaller. So you want to just have a little brief sentence here, right? You should say, um, since K is increasing, right, this is positive. You mean since H is? Uh, sorry, H, yes, sorry. H is, H is increasing at a rate of K. Right? I haven't even given the depth of the water a name, so I'm just going to call it the depth of the water. Oh. Right? So you've got two quantities that increase and decrease exactly according to one another because they're different, they're adjacent parts of the interval, right? Um, the depth of the water is decreasing, or this is a bit funny. I, I don't like the way that they've said this necessarily. I think it makes more sense to say decreasing at a rate of k, but they've given us changes at a rate of negative k. Because the word changes, it doesn't have like a sign sort of associated with it, whereas increasing and decreasing do. So I'm just going to use the language that they have because that's the result we're trying to prove. So the depth of the water is changing at a rate of minus k. All right? And I don't even have units on, on k yet. That's because I'm going to get them in the last part of the question. Okay? So by the way, that's, that's really important. That's, that's like a mark right there. Right? To be able to interpret that and therefore get this out of it. Alternatively, what you could, you could have done is you could have um, introduced another variable. And then that variable is going to have a negative attached to it, which is what you want in the first place. But I kind of like using less variables rather than more. Okay.